Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update for part two on our new series, The Occult Knowledge of the Hidden. Uh, of course, joining me is Brother Lewis. Brother Lewis, why don't you say hello to the LHB family? I'd like to welcome everyone back and those that are new and watching this for the first time. Uh, we ask you to look back in our videos. Uh, this is the second part of something that uh, has crept into the church Um and if we go back to the Bible, it crept into the church early on when the church uh, was formed. So uh, this is uh, something that we, we feel that uh, has to be talked about. Amen. Now, if you guys are new to our channel, go ahead. If you like our content, hit that subscribe button. Hit, click the notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. Don't forget to like and share this video because that's how we circulate around YouTube. And uh, don't forget to visit our merch store. We got some great uh, designs there that you can represent the faith uh, that was once and all delivered to the saints. And for our returners, welcome back. We love your comments. We love uh, your prayers. We covet your prayers. And we thank you uh, for all that you do. Okay. So before we begin, we're going to be taking a look at one of the um, witches uh, that has crept in to the church and has millions of followers. and that person is Cat Kerr. Now, before we begin, go ahead and take a look at this clip. Roll it. Um, well, pro those of you who don't know, the Lord's been taking her to heaven for several years and showing her things and bringing her back and allowing her to share with us. So let's just welcome Cat Kerr. <laughs> and it is our time to torment the demons. Say it's our honor and privilege to torment the demons. And then I, they gave me their daughter's phone number. He and his sister were really close together. And so I called and just spoke to her for a few minutes. And, and then about, I don't know, it was probably about a year later, she called me. She goes, today is my birthday, my 30th birthday. And I just wanted to know, does my brother even remember me? Does he still think about me? Because we had planned a big celebration on this day. We didn't know he'd go home. So I, well, she's on the phone to me. God caught me up to heaven. And I saw her brother <laughs> standing at a portal. This is going to sound wild, but it doesn't matter. He was throwing Cheetos at her from the portal. And he was singing the worst rendition of Happy Birthday I've ever heard. And this is a guy who sings, was singing for a living, right? Like, man, that's, that's awful. That's awful. <laughs> and then God sends me back. And I'm, I'm, she's still going on on the phone. I said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I got to tell you. Hey, I don't know what you can think about this, but I got to tell you what, what I just saw in heaven. I saw your brother, and he was throwing Cheetos over the portal at you. And she starts to yell and scream. She goes, that's, that's Ron. That's still my brother. That's still him. She said, he would have throw by, he, uh, run by, uh, what do you want, Cheeto throwing, whatever. He w she had her fro too. So he, she said his greatest thing to do was run through the room and throw as many Cheetos in her fro that would stick there. And she said, he did it all the time. And I was so irritated. But now it's the most precious thing in the world that you told me that. Because I know he didn't forget me. This was on her birthday, remember. And I said, oh, I don't know how to tell you this. But he, he sounded the worst I have ever heard. For someone who's anointed to sing, she said, was it the worst happy birthday you ever heard in your life? I went, yeah. She said, he did that every year too. <laughs> so she was so blessed to find out she, that he had not changed. He still remembered her. He was still himself. And she was so blessed by that. As you can see from that uh, video, brother. Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, well, um, what, what can you say? Like, how, what do you say to someone who listens to a person like Kat Kerr? It's like you're talking 
to to and I hate to use this word, but fools at this point, right? Well, people just will follow anyone, or, or you know, uh, Dave Courage, uh, Jim Jones, uh, Heaven Gate. P- people just will follow, and and they don't understand. They don't really think um, th- this. This is so ridiculous that anyone that watches this has to realize that there's something wrong here. Okay, there, there, there's something wrong here. Now, this woman claims to go. I mean, she travels to heaven back and forth. It's like you know. Um, all the time, and, and it's funny because in the video, you know, she's on the phone, and all of a sudden, God takes her to heaven. <laughs> and I'm sorry, man, but if 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 the Lord took me to heaven, mm-hmm. I'm not coming back so casual. Okay, she she just talks nonchalantly about heaven, you know, and 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 apparently she sees this this boy, the brother of this 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 young woman who died up in heaven throwing uh, a Cheetos or something from heaven through a portal. Now, <laughs> I, I know that heaven has food. I get it. You know, the Bible says there's angels food up there, and I know we're going to be eating up there. But I doubt if there's Cheetos <laughs> in heaven getting <laughs> rained down through the magical rainbow bridge from Asgard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, uh, it, it's um, the the Cheetos, of course, are going to be non-fattening because, you know, in, in, in heaven, you're not going to. Uh, and, and it's funny, she says, throwing Cheetos through the portal. It's like, really? And like you mentioned, you know, the Asgardian Bridge, you know, uh, the Rainbow Bridge. That, um, we hear this in, in the comics, you know, uh, where you can transport, uh, transport yourself from one place to another. Um, and you said that, you, you know, you wouldn't come back nonchalantly, you know, when you, if you go to heaven, but when you're like Cat Kerr, that you go there all the time, it, it just becomes monotonous, you know, it's just no big thing. Well, I'm, I, maybe it's just me, but if, <laughs> you know, the Lord is so awesome that it doesn't matter how many times I see him, it's always going to be awe inspiring. And I'm not going to be, you know, so casually talking about it. <clears throat> and, and what's amazing is that, you know, these people that, travel to heaven and hell they come back and they could talk about it so freely whereas mm. paul was not uh permitted to speak about those things that he saw in heaven in detail all he could do was record the fact that he went right uh yes uh he, he you know he and this is paul this is not just anyone this is paul the apostle you know the uh, the apostles to the gentiles um god took him out of his uh religious um family that he was born into okay the pharisees and took him to heaven and he was so amazed by this you know uh, it's like when john went to heaven um so people nowadays think that just going to heaven is you know like god calls you and this ties in with the occult people want hidden knowledge they want to know something that someone else does does not know and for people down here that follow this uh, crazy people, it's because the Bible is not enough. Jesus is not enough. So they have to go to someone, a human being, to tell them what heaven is like. Right. And, you know, it, it's amazing because uh, uh, we've dealt with Kat Kerr before. And unfortunately, she lives down in our neck of the woods down here in mm-hmm. Florida. And, um, you know, I, I, I did a couple of videos on her where she was trying to uh, uh, knock away a hurricane that was coming down here. And, um, you know, I call her the weather witch because that's what Mm. she is. And, um, you know, of course the hurricane came and it went up the West, the West, uh, side of Florida and did a lot of destruction and damage. And she, you know, had the nerve to say that, Oh no, my prophecy didn't fail. It said, I sent it up to the East, the West coast because they needed rain. We were in a drought. Now, brother, look, (laughs) There's a couple of things wrong with this. If Florida was in a drought, which we are never in a drought in the summertime, anybody who lives down here knows it rains every other day. Okay, that's one thing. Now, number two, if that was the case and you had the power to send a hurricane up to the 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 place where it's uh, needed, you know, where where it needs water, why would you send a destructive rain? Why would you not send a pleasant rain? You know, why destroy all those houses and lives? And say it's from God. You see, these people, um, they're liars. They're liars. And when one prophecy fails, they twist that into something else to excuse away that false prophecy, don't they? They do. And and 
you know, false prophecies and, and people still continue uh, to listen to them. This goes back to like Kenneth Copeland, who can control the weather also. And then, like I said, it goes back to little gods. They, they, they want to appear to have power um, and power over God. This is not just I, I'm, I'm a little God. I have power over God because I can get him to do what I want done. That's right. And, you know, speaking of, you know, uh, Fred Hendricks and myself wrote a whole book on uh, the little God's lie called the Genesis 3, 5 Project Rise of the New Gods. And it deals with uh, the little the little God's life from Genesis 3, 5 that Satan has sown into the hearts of men. And we see the fruits of that lie today. I mean, look, the reason you have gangs, okay? I don't care if it's Italian, Chinese, whatever, Russian, mafia, regular street gangs uh, to corporate uh, uh, individuals. The reason you have people fighting and competing against each other is because everyone, well, the majority, okay, of the lost think that they are gods. They So that you have a bunch of little gods fighting each other for control over their own Mount Olympus, don't we? Uh, yes, it, it goes back to saying, you know, you cannot take care of yourself. You don't know things. I know things. I can help you. Um, and, and we're not just talking about an individual. Like you said, you're talking about corporations. You're talking about government, yeah. where the government tells you, okay, you can't, do anything on your own. I have to give you money. I have to give you benefits. And and what it creates is a dependency, like a drug dealer. You know, it's like, I need that drug. I need that dependency. I need that welfare check. And, and you know, so they become actually their God, people's God. You know, they think to themselves, I'm a little God. And people will actually think, okay, yes, you are a God. Well, that ties into Bible prophecy. I mean, uh, the Bible says that the Antichrist will come on the scene, and unless you have his mark in the right hand or the forehead, you will not be able to buy or sell. And so you, since you're not going to be able to buy or sell, I mean, think about it. He's in control. Yeah. He's going to be the one giving you your benefits. He is going to become the God of the people, right? And for you to get those benefits, like you said, you have to have the mark, and you have to worship him as God. That's right. He will have to be worshipped as God. Now, Paul, going back to the Apostle Paul, uh, in the book of Acts, and I, I know you have that uh, there, in, in Acts chapter 20, uh, starting at verse 28 to 31. Whenever you get there, brother, go ahead and read that. I want to I delve into that real quick. And uh, okay. since we are on the topic of people like Kat Kerr, uh, this comes in perfectly. Go for it. Okay. And the, the word says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. The Apostle Paul, for three years, mm. consistently on a daily basis, warned of false mm. teachers rising up from within the congregation. Uh, with tears, you know, and, and and people, you know, tend to say, well, you know, you you discernment guys, you know, you so-called Bereans, you guys are so harsh, you know, you shouldn't be calling people out, you you shouldn't be, you know, uh, publicly, you know, exposing people. Wait a minute, yes, we should. Uh, th this was commanded by God to do that. If you love people, you warn of the dangers of deception. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and unfortunately, again, you have people like Cat Kirk coming in here, teaching another gospel number one preaching another jesus mm. and 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 come with a so-called new word from god right uh correct and there's no new revelation every everything has been written okay it's in the word you want to know what god has to say what's in store for us in the future it is written in the word um, but people are lazy sometimes about reading the word and, and they just rather hear it from someone. And then what happens is you don't really know if they are telling the truth or not. And they will take a scripture, a verse and turn it around, not knowing what the rest of that, let's say, chapter 
uh, says, um, and, and we have to remember these are letters, uh, not really books and chapters. It, it, it all runs together, but it was separated um, in, in a certain way. But you have to know exactly what was said before, what was said after, because you can't take a verse out of the Bible and make a doctrine out of it. Right, and unfortunately, this is what we see. You know, uh, Kat Kerr also said that the Lord told her to dye her hair, all those different colors, you know, and uh, you you made me laugh the other day when we were doing the mm. research for this. You said, uh, yeah, so God could, you know, find her just in case, you know, he loses her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she is. <laughs> oh, there's yeah. my anointed uh, one down there on earth to give my yeah. new revelation to her. You know, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. And, you know, and we, we, we joke about it because it's just so sad. I mean, that you have to, you gotta, you gotta make something light of it because unfortunately there, again, she has millions, millions of followers. So that, you know, the sad part is that tells you there's millions of people that are believing a lie that they're believing this. And it's not even a good lie. You know, there's some lies that are really, you know, detailed and they, they sound like the truth, but they're not. This is so, this is like, uh, 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 Candy Land and Rainbow Bright versus reality. This thing is so far out there that you should not fall for any of it, right? Uh, correct. And we understand the lost people who do not accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior because of pride, because they don't think that they need one. Um, they don't need someone to pay for their sins because they're really good people. You know, um, but it's when when people that are supposed to be Christians, people that are supposed to be followers of Christ, and they're supposed to know the word when it happens. And like you said, we 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 laugh about it because it's ridiculous, but it's sad because these people are you know they're 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 losing their salvation or they they never had it, okay, uh, because they're following someone like Cat Kerr. They're not losing their salvation; they're losing their opportunity to be saved. Yeah. Because mm. they're following a false teacher with a false gospel. Now, going back to what Paul says in Acts, he, like he's, he, he starts off by saying, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Get, prepare yourselves. Be alert. Okay? Because he says he knows that after his departing, after he dies and goes to heaven, after he leaves this mm -hmm. planet, that's what he means by his departing. Okay? Grievous wolves shall enter among you. Okay? Not sparing the flock. They don't care about the flock. They're wolves. They care about their, their money. They care about the following because of the money, right? And he says that, that he knows that after his departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, okay? And of your own selves. This is from within the church. This is not yeah. just from outside. This is people that are in your midst that are deceiving people that come. And this title of the series, again, is called uh, The Occult Knowledge of the Hidden. When you see Cat Kerr up there or Kenneth Copeland or you know, any one of them saying they, they have just heard from God, what they're telling you is we have hidden knowledge that's not found in the written pages of the Word of God, right? Yes, and, and we see this uh, in, in congregations all the time where you know uh, a preacher, a pastor, someone on the pulpit says, you know, I just received this revelation from God, uh, or, or they come to you and says, you know, like you said before, thus saith the Lord. And, and, and you know that it's not true. Uh, God is not talking to them. Uh, they give prophecies that, you know, 15 years ago, and they still haven't come true. And, and then again, they will change it around to say, well, it's not time. A lot of the times the pastor will tell you that's because you didn't have enough faith, you know. And these are all lies. There is no new revelation. God is not speaking to one person with new revelations or anything. Everything is written in the Word. Amen. And, and you know, you said it earlier. It's because the Word is not enough for them. Right. You know, th th this is the problem here. You know, um, when I read the Word of God, when I study it, and I know you, you and I, it's funny because when you have two Christians that get together, whether on the phone or in person, they find themselves talking about the Word of God in Hours can go by. Yes. And there's no boredom. There's no, oh, man, we've been on this forever. You and I sometimes have to stop the call because if yes. not, we will talk all night. And we're talking about, yeah, we talk about other things, absolutely. But the main focus is the Word. We're always discussing Bible prophecy. We're all the, always discussing the Word of God. And it's always exciting 
to us. We never get tired of it. And that should be the attitude of the saint, right? Uh, correct. And, and, and we talk and it's just, oh, we, we, you know, we have to hang up, you know, um, and then we talk for another 15 minutes or we really have to go and we'll continue for another 15 minutes because it, it goes on. Because when you're talking to someone who loves the word and, and, and loves what it says and, you, you, you know, you want to continue. I mean, this, this you don't want it to stop because the word is what feeds you, you know, it fits your soul. Uh, and this is all you want to do. And, you know, brother, when people understand what the Bible is, they see it's not it's not just a book. This is the word of the creator himself. And and, and, and it, I, I don't think people understand that the Bible transcends time and space, past, present, future. It goes beyond that. It's the word of the living God. These are God's words to us. That should excite you. You want to know what God says? You open the word of God and you study it, you read it. And the things that he reveals to you in there, it blows your mind. And and this is on this side of heaven. And we're not even talking about when we get to that side. Uh, yes. <laughs> the, the promises that he has in store. So I don't know why people would settle for less and go with these charlatans with rainbow bright hair color, okay? And these uh, extraordinary uh, visions Okay, because look, Satan is very clever. He's very clever. He knows that human beings want to follow someone. He knows that human yeah. beings want to worship someone, but he doesn't want human beings to worship the true God. So what does he do? He sets up his false teachers and false prophets and false ministers to take the place of the true ones and to have these fanciful experiences that they could share to the gullible, right? Uh, yes. And he knows what people like, and that's why there's so many religions, because there's something for everyone. I mean, this is like going to an ice cream shop and, and having a thousand different uh, tastes of ice cream. So, you you know, you pick one, I pick one, he picks a different one. So Satan had to come up with all kinds of religions, everything that it looks like is coming from God. It looks real. But it's not. And when we go back to the uh, the Garden of Eden, that's what happened to Eve and uh, Adam and Eve. You know, it looked like something that you wanted. Um, it, it looks appetizing. You know, when in fact, Eve added on to what Satan says and, and said the fruit, you know, it looks uh, pleasing to the eyes. Can't remember exactly what she said, but, you know, you add on to it and this is what you want. And as far as the word. You know, Paul wrote here, take heed therefore unto yourselves. Okay. Okay. Paul wrote that down, but this is God talking to you. God is telling you because if you want to actually, like you said, this is God talking. You can imagine God talking to you and you don't have to imagine because God is talking to you and God is telling you, take heed therefore unto yourself. This is God telling you something. Paul wrote it, but God said it. That's right. You know, um, and, and, you know, God used men like pens to write his mm -hmm. word. And, you know, um, it, going back to the garden, we mentioned this last week, but that's exactly where the occult started. The hidden knowledge, you know, Satan, you know, comes to Eve saying, hey, uh, you know, uh, you can be like God's, you know, God is hiding something from you, Eve. And Eve not only added on to what Satan said, she added on to what God says. Yes. She said, she said that God said not to touch it. Yes. God didn't say right. not to touch. He said not to eat it. And yes. uh, so you see what happens when you when you when you stray from God's word. You tend yeah. to add or subtract or you know manipulate God's word to suit you. Now here's the thing: Satan claimed to have this hidden knowledge. Eve bought it hook, line, and sinker. And Adam went in eyes wide open. Adam knew the truth. He wasn't deceived. And he went in and he joined his wife. And Satan yeah. and the cosmic rebellion of the ages. And here we are dying to this day. Now, what 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 should the Christian leader or teacher or pastor do uh, when it comes to these false teachers? Should they sit on their hands and say, well, it's not for us to judge? Or should they do what the Bible says to do and expose them? Well, you, you, you said something there that is, is for us not to judge. And, and that is one of that's one of Satan's lies. OK, <laughs> that go. we are not supposed to judge, but we are and we do this all the time. And but we do not judge. 
we just it's the word that judges and and then we you know when when Jesus comes back um you know the the sword in revelation it says sword in his mouth he's talking about the word because the word is what judges people okay i'm not saying okay don't steal that pencil no no god is saying do not steal that pencil i'm just repeating what god says and by the way you know human beings we judge every day every second yeah. of the day pretty much you judge what clothes you're going to wear you judge what job you want you judge what car you're going to buy i mean if the, if we were not to judge then all the courtrooms around the world should close down and all the judges should get off the bench and all the lawyers should just mm. go home and find a new occupation because we're not supposed to judge. That's that's a lie. And those, by the way, who say we shouldn't judge are judging us for judging. <laughs> <laughs> it boggles my mind, brother. But listen, all right, the time has flown again from us. Um, brother, like always, like always, we want to end with the gospel invitation. Now, a lot of people complicate the gospel. A lot of uh, people, you know, don't even say the gospel, all right? But people are watching right now that are probably thinking about salvation, and they want to know, how do I get saved? How do I get rid of this guilt of the sin that's weighing me down? How do I get rid of all my bad deeds and sinful uh, deeds that I have committed? How can God love someone like me? Now, what would you say to that individual? Well, when when we look at ourselves, sometimes they say, how can God love me? And, and look, look who I am. Uh, you know, I'm not a nice person. Uh, I do a lot of bad things. And and that's the reason you have to go to, to, to Jesus, because you are that bad person. You are not that good. But through his sacrifice on the cross, through that blood that he shed for you, uh, he had made a way for you to be good in God's eyes, because he doesn't look at you now anymore. He looks at you through Jesus Christ. So we need someone like Jesus to forgive our sins, to be that um, between us and God, so God, God can see us through him. We need to be uh, honest with ourselves and, and realize we need a savior. We're sinners. Uh, we cannot pay for our own sins. Only God can pay for our sins, and that was Jesus on the cross. So you need to go before him and tell them, you know, I'm a sinner. It's, it's simple. You, you don't have to be two hours uh, telling him all your sins. Just be truthful to him with an open heart and say, I need you. You are my Lord and you are my Savior. And those who call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. And, and you know, uh, in Romans chapter 4, verse 23 to 25, it says this. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Yes. Jesus died for our offenses, but it doesn't stop there. The gospel, I know a lot of people just like to say Jesus Christ died for your sins and that's it. No. He died for your sins, but he rose yes. again on the third day for our justification. You know, and, and he did all the hard work. You don't have to do anything. Like Brother Lewis just said, you have to come honestly. Listen, we're all guilty. Yes. We're all guilty of something. I don't care who you are, how good you think you are. We're guilty of something, whether it's lying, cheating, uh, uh, thinking lustful thoughts, whatever it is. We're guilty before a holy and just God who cannot let sin just go. Okay? It will be punished wherever it's found. Now, he did. Like Brother Lewis to say, make a way out for you. He sent a substitute, his son. So, you know, trust in that. You know, trust in the Savior. Don't wait uh, five minutes from now. Don't wait two seconds from now. Do it right this second. You know why? Because you do not know what hour the Lord will come. Yeah. You want to be ready now on this side of the rapture. Trust me when I say you don't want to be here for the tribulation. You don't want, the Bible calls that the worst time in human history. And even if the tribulation doesn't come right away and you die, that's eternity in hell, in a place that, that was made for the devil and his angels. You don't want to be there. So please listen to what Brother Lewis just says. Listen to the word of God. Put your full trust and, and faith in the finished, complete work, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, so next week we'll be back for part three, and uh, I believe we're going to be taking a look at uh, 
Bill Johnson from Bethel Church, another uh, <laughs> so-called prophet of the Lord. Oh man, and and Bethel music is all over the world, and they're they're just you mm. know they're very famous in the world. Um, they do like grave soaking and things like they go to the graveyard to try to soak up the anointing from dead Christians. Uh, it, it's so unbiblical. It's just necromancy what they do. So we'll be doing mm. that on part three on our new series. And again, guys, if you're new, go ahead and, and uh, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff. All right. And uh, as always, we thank you again. We love you guys. And please uh, comment, comment below, request videos that you might want to see or uh, teachers you might want to expose that we, we haven't touched on yet. And uh, we'll try to get to them best as we can. And uh, God willing, uh, we'll get to them all. But until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless.